Now I want to continue on to some applications of machine learning. One example is in games. Take Super Mario as an example. They've used machine learning to have a computer beat a certain level, but didn't specifically give the computer any strategy or tell it what to do. They just told it to make it to the end. At the beginning, the computer was terrible. It started off just by running forward until it died. But then it started making associations of when to jump and how to move throughout the level. After many, many games, it got to superhuman level, and it was never programmed specifically to do what it did. It was just programmed to learn. Or take a game of chess. How would you make a computer that was good at chess, and not through machine learning? Well, if you have a starting board, there are a variety of opening moves you can make. Pawn to a3, pawn to a4, knight to c3, and so on. The first turn would actually have 20 moves to be exact. The next player can make certain moves on top of those, and this just keeps going. That player can do 20 moves as well, making the end of the second turn have 400 possible games that can be played. And by the way, after each player has gone three times, there are already over a hundred million different possible games that could have been played. So what would be ideal for a computer to beat a human? Well, it'd be really ideal if a computer could look down this entire tree of possibilities and determine the best route for it to take to get to a winning game based on the other player's moves. But there are so many possible moves in chess that a computer could not go through even close to all of them in one lifetime. So computers can only check a handful of moves and then evaluate which ones are best based on various parameters like how vulnerable the king is, how much material is left on the board, and so on. Now an example of this is Deep Blue, a chess playing computer developed by IBM that beat one of the greatest chess players of all time a few decades ago. Now what Deep Blue does is it uses an evaluation function, just like I said, based off position, material, how much each piece is worth, and so on, to make a decision on what moves to make by looking as far ahead as it can. But it doesn't learn, it's programmed how to evaluate a given situation. Now compare this to AlphaGo. AlphaGo is a computer program that plays the game Go. It was developed by DeepMind, which I said earlier is an AI company owned now by Google. If you haven't heard of Go, it's a two-player game where the rules are very simple. You just place tiles on the board, trying to gain as much territory on the board as possible. However, there are more moves than chess, and that tree of moves that I showed earlier would be even more chaotic. This is said to be a simple game, but also the most complex game in the world, which makes it even more difficult for a computer to be programmed to beat the best humans. But the difference between AlphaGo and Deep Blue is AlphaGo is just programmed to learn. No strategy or anything like that. It plays games and figures out how to win. Well, in March of 2016, AlphaGo beat the 18-time world champion in Go four out of five times. This was a huge breakthrough for machine learning and AI. Many people thought this would not be possible. This meant that we could in fact program a computer to learn a very abstract game and have it beat the best human in the world. The machine wasn't programmed with strategies or how to evaluate how strong a board is. They had it play a lot of games and showed it hundreds of thousands to millions of games that had been previously played and it figured out how to become stronger. AlphaGo used neural networks, or specifically deep reinforcement learning, to do this. So again, Deep Blue played chess, but had a strong programmed evaluation function. Think of it like taking the strategies and thought process from the world's greatest chess players and downloading it into your head. That's what Deep Blue kind of is. AlphaGo had no strategy put into it. It started out like you if you've never played Go. No idea of strategy whatsoever. But then it started playing, and just like it would be for you, it got better by training. But for a computer, we can have it run a million games in a very short amount of time. And remember, Go is so complex strategy-wise, so if AlphaGo used an evaluation function instead and we just programmed it with strategy, at least currently, it could be an average player, but it would not be elite. So that's why this win was a huge breakthrough. Now I want to go into research and companies kind of all in one. So let's go through some companies working on AI and what they're working on. So the first one you obviously know of, which is Google. Something they're working on is Google Brain, which is a deep learning AI project. Some breakthroughs for this are that they made an AI system that was able to create its own encryption system so two machines could communicate securely while a third was trying to intercept the message. 
Normally this is manually done by humans, but we've shown that computers can do the same thing. It also had breakthroughs in image enhancement where they took extremely low quality images and were able to make them higher quality. Can you tell at all what this is? Well, Google's program was given this and had to make the enhanced image. And it constructed a still blurry but much higher resolution photo with more detail. And they've also had breakthroughs in Google Translate and changing speech into text of another language instantly through the use of neural networks. Another famous AI project is Watson, which was made by IBM. Watson is a question answering computer system, but it can answer questions posed in natural language. Whereas with Siri, you have to ask kind of simple questions, like when was Isaac Newton born? Watson can answer much more complex style questions through the use of natural language processing. You can watch videos of Watson winning in a game of Jeopardy against two former winners. Jeopardy doesn't involve questions that are as easy to interpret. Siri would not be able to answer Jeopardy style questions as an example. Although Watson is a supercomputer and isn't something you can just buy at Best Buy, at least currently you can't. Facebook is also doing a lot of AI. For example, they use textual analysis, which again uses neural networks and analyzes the relationship between words and their meaning, and it also works with all kinds of languages. Then based on this, it can figure out what kinds of products to show you. You can look up deep text to find out more about this. They also use artificial intelligence for ad targeting and to get the right ads in front of the right people. And remember, advertising is the main way that Facebook makes its money. There's Apple, Twitter, and more that are also getting into artificial intelligence and also buying AI companies. Now those were some of the bigger companies working on AI, but now I'm going to go into some ones you may not have heard of. First is a company called Nato. This is a company that uses AI to help prevent car accidents. It doesn't make cars like Tesla, but its product is actually a camera, but a very high-tech camera, which is a multi-sensor device that detects collisions, tracks driver behavior, and monitors risky maneuvering. This can even be applied to teaching autonomous vehicles. Then Versive is a company that offers a security engine that detects suspicious behaviors like someone hacking a business and stealing money or intellectual property, and then it uses machine learning to determine what is happening and give you the information you need to take action. Affectiva is a business that is making emotion recognition products, as in things that can analyze human facial expressions and determine emotion. On their site, they say applications would be like testing if a new ad is being received well by viewers by analyzing their facial expressions. Or when people watch a TV show which has a new character, you can analyze very quickly how people are responding to this new addition. Sith Science is using machine learning to detect fraud on websites. For example, they have a product for payment fraud which detects fraudsters in real time using machine learning and then prevents fraudulent transactions. Or they have a product for preventing scams and spam from being posted on a certain website. Companies like Airbnb or Zillow that are all about real estate and postings would be example companies who'd use something like this. Zebra Med is an Israeli company and is using machine learning for helping in the radiology field. They say they're able to predict diseases better than a human can by referencing a library of medical images. Recently they've developed algorithms that help predict certain cardiovascular events such as heart attacks. Then the company Blue River Technology is using computer vision and artificial intelligence on agriculture equipment. The machines use computer vision and libraries full of plant images to make decisions on how to treat individual plants as the machine passes over them. So as the machine moves and it detects weeds as an example, it may use a robotic nozzle to spray herbicide to those unwanted weeds without harming nearby plants. So it can assess the needs of individual plants and treat things differently as it moves, which improves efficiency and saves money. And I'm going to end there with the companies, but remember there are so many out there. I found an article stating that there were over 100 AI startups just in healthcare. So really this could have gone on for a while. And while a lot of this seems really cool, there's a lot of fear around AI. With computers able to learn and beat the best human players in Go, the most complex game out there, who knows what else machines will be able to do better than humans in the near future. We have seen an increase in AI a lot recently, but people believe there's an exponential curve ahead that we can't see where AI will explode in growth. It's hard to say now what the future holds, but AI is definitely going to be a huge part of it. But comment below your thoughts and opinions on the matter. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.